Hello everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Now we know that the UI has changed in Farming Simulator 25 versus 22 and we've got little snippets of information that the menu systems have changed as well and boy have they. This video is going to run you through the various changes to the menu system and hopefully familiarize yourself with those menus so when the game releases on Tuesday, November 12th, you'll be up to speed and ready to go. Now, Walter and I, we just got done the in-game tutorial, and that video is going to be published in a little bit later. But let's just jump into the escape menu. And yeah, this is a whole lot different. So we have the PDA on the right. Of course, we can zoom in and out by using the scroll wheel like normal. Prop types are now listed on the left via a scroll menu versus being on the right with a paged menu like we had in Farm Sim 22. We can easily diselect all the crops by picking Z or clicking down here. And at that point, we can either individually select crops or we can go ahead and activate them all again. From within the map menu, we have sub menus and we're gonna navigate those with these left and right arrows. So we have crop types and these are all the crops that we already know about, all 25. And then we have growth. Under growth, we have stubble tillage, cultivated, plowed, seedbed, various growth stages, ready to harvest, harvested, remove foliage, and withered. Soil composition, we have different stages of weed, fertilized, lime, rolling, mulched, stones, and water. Now water is gonna represent our, our rice fields. Hot spots, we have vehicles, combines, trailers, tools, and workers. And then for buildings, we have tip stations, loading stations, productions, animals, contracts, and others. And others are going to include our farmhouse as well as our neighbors. Like good old neighbor Ben, who's literally right around the corner. Under farmland, this is where we're going to be able to buy and see the farmland we now own. We have unowned farmland, which is shaded. Currently selected farmland, which is that color right there. And then my farm, which is gonna be represented of this farmland, which is the farmland that we currently own. And from here, we can either visit the farmland. Look at that. Or we can buy the farmland. Let's get back over here to Walter. We don't him being too lonely. We have our create job screen. This is where we're going to be able to create a job for a hired helper. And then we're going to be able to see our active helpers from this menu here. We jump down the next to crop counter. This is our singular crop counter for Farming Simulator 25. I had high hopes that we would have multiple calendars, one per base map. Nope, ain't gonna happen. Sadly, we have a unified growth calendar for North America, Europe, and Asia. Somehow I feel all three of those are very distinct, yet we still have a singular growth calendar. That's fine. Here it is. You can get a good representation. We've got lots of crops that are going to give you multiple months worth of time to harvest and plant, which is always a good thing to see. Although I really don't think that we really have too much capability of double cropping here. Just taking a quick look at it. I mean, we could harvest our wheat in July, and then it looks like we could put carrots in real late. So we could go carrots to or wheat to carrots, but that's about it. We have our animal screen. This is gonna show us our different pastures. Up here, we can click left and right to toggle between the different pastures. We have three 50 month old cows. You can see our health, reproductive state, productivity, water, needing water. You can see their food, that they need total mixed rations, hay, silage, grass, 
and right now they are nearly full up on meadow grass. Remember, Farm Sim 25, cows, sheep, goats, and horses, they're all going to graze. If there's grass to eat, they're going to be able to eat it, so you're not going to have to keep feeding them, but it's only going to give them 40% as far as overall effectiveness. So if you want them to be up to 100%, you will need to provide them some supplemental food. We have contracts, a totally new contract screen. We have contracts are sorted by type, fertilizing, hoeing, mowing, and weeding. And then we have our various neighbors, which are going to be the ones offering said contracts. We have new contracts, and we have a listing of active contracts. We can see here which field the contract is on, what it's going to cost to lease the equipment if we do lease it, how large the field is, what equipment we'll get if we are leasing, and then ultimately how much we're going to get from this contract, minus any leasing costs, of course, if we do that. Now, something else to notice here is there is a time here, 15 hours and 27 minutes. I believe this is telling us that this, these contracts will expire, and this is the time frame at which they expire. Then we have our production chains, and I really like this. We can see all the productions available to us on the map in one place. They're all sorted alphabetically. And we have owned and available. And if we go to the production chain, we can see what they produce. And we can see what recipe they need in order to produce said item. You can see that they is either running or not running how many cycles per month, cycle costs. So on Riverbend Springs, for example, we have a bakery, biogas plant, canning factory, carpentry, a cement factory, a cooper, grain mill, oil mill, a paper factory, a playground maker hall. Okay, so maybe you make toys, rope, and rope is now confirmed cotton or wool to make rope. We have sawmill, spinnery, tailor, and wagon builder. We then come to our prices screen, and this is going to be probably one of the most overhauled interfaces that we have in FS25. On the left, we have all of our crops and commodities that we can either grow or produce. And it is quite an extensive list. We're not going to run through all of this at this point in time, but maybe we'll do that in a later video. Then we have over here the various stations that are going to buy or sell the particular commodity that we have selected. So in this case, we have barley selected, and these are locations, and they're all going to buy our barley. So when it says sell, that means you are selling barley to them. If it says buy, that means basically you are buying product from them, okay? Below that, we have a chart as far as the estimated annual price fluctuation. See, right now, technically, barley is at its lowest point of the year. January is perceived to be possibly the best time of year to sell barley. Then we have our vehicles overview. This is going to be a listing of all the vehicles we own. And we can sort this various ways. It's going to list vehicles. It's going to list the age that they are, how many working hours, the condition they are as far as maintenance, if they are leased, and if they are owned, what the resale value of those are. We also get some nice statistics down here at the bottom for any particular piece of machinery, including fill types, power ratings, and such. Hand tools are new to Farming Simulator 25, and we have this interface to show us where the hand tools are. Are they in the shed, or is someone actually making use of them, and how old are they? Pretty kind of interesting interface. Our finances screen is going to show us our debits and credits throughout the life of our game here on this map. And we also can tell if we have a loan or not, and what our current money balance is. Then lastly, we have our statistics screen. Again, this is going to be specific to this save game. Uh, something just to point out. 
Riven Springs has 25 collectibles. Then we go to our settings screen. We have the option of saving the game. We can go to game settings, general settings, control settings, help, and then we can quit. So with that, let's go to game settings now, and this is gonna be our settings, general settings and control screen, right? We have the ability to edit our save game, change our save game interval. We can change our time scale from 0.5 all the way up to 360. We can change at any point in time our economic difficulty, and we can turn traffic on and off. We can turn seasonal growth on or off, or we could also pause growth. We can change the number of days per month, individually one day per year, or one day at a time, all the way up to 28 day months. We can set fixed visuals as we could in Farm Sim 22. And if we do this, then basically any time of the year, it's gonna look as if it's April. But we'll just go back here and change this to off. We can toggle snow on or off. We can turn crop destruction, periodic plowing. We can enable or disable field stones, lime, weeds, and probably the one that most people are curious on. How can I turn off them twisters? Well, right here under disaster destruction, it's currently set to enable. You can say visuals only, or you can turn it to disable. We have the option of dirt, normal, fast, or slow and off. We have automatic engine start on or off. We have stop and go braking on or off. Trailer fill limit on or off. And fuel usage. We have normal, high, low. And then here we can tell our AI helpers, do we want to have them automatically refill, refill fuel, seed, fertilizer, slurry, or manure? Under general settings, we can enable or disable the help menu. We can turn on or off colorblind mode. We can turn on or off interactive zone markers, info triggers, or field info. We can change our money units from euros to dollars or pounds or measuring unit, kilometers or miles, Celsius and Fahrenheit for temperature, hectares or acres for area units. We can turn on the radio or disable it permanently. And if we have the radio on, we can set is the radio always always able to be played? Do we have our earphones in all the time? Or are we only able to listen to the radio when we're in a vehicle? Reset camera is an interesting option. It will allow the game to remember the camera position per vehicle. And whenever you get into that same vehicle, it'll put the camera back exactly where it was when you got out. Indoor camera suspension is going to allow the indoor camera when you are driving in cab view to allow that seat suspension to go up and down and bob that camera up and down as opposed to having it fixed. Dynamic vehicle camera will attempt to hold the camera horizontally when you are going up or down an incline, as opposed to tilting the camera up or down as a result of said incline. Then we have invert Y look. We can turn on or off easy arm controls. We can adjust the camera sensitivity, the vehicle arm sensitivity, the steering back speed, the steering sensitivity, the change of direction by being manual or automatic, gear shift mode, manual with clutch, manual or automatic. We can set the speedometer to show either engine speed or vehicle speed. We can switch the train on or off. We can auto help input mode. So this is gonna either show us keyboard helper commands in the F1 menu, gamepad helper commands in the F1 menu, or auto select, which means it's going to detect what you last used and provides you the appropriate button to push based on that last used input. We have the ability to now adjust our beacons, which is pretty interesting. And we can turn on or off the automatic wood harvester cutting. That was a feature, I think, in the premium expansion, platinum expansion, sorry, with River Silver Run Forest. <laughs> These map names are getting mixed up in my head. We also have the ability to change our volume. So we have our master volume, vehicle volume, environmental volume, character volume. Actually, during the tutorial, I thought he was kind of quiet. So I'm going to turn that up. Radio volume, if you have that turned on, and the GUI interface, or basically the game interface volume as you're clicking through the menus. Once again, you can change your player controls here if you want to rebind certain controls to the keyboard. 
or to a mouse. And if you have multiple controls set up, well, like a side panel, you can set that up here. I also have a Thrustmaster wheel, so I can set that up here as well. A gear shifter, and then I have a Logitech joystick also plugged in. So all of those options are listed here. Something that is not listed here is gonna be your collector's edition ignition switch. I don't know if you heard that there, but that is not something that we can reprogram. It works in game if you have automatic engine start turned off, but it's not something we're gonna be able to rebind to other actions. As far as other menus, well, we have, of course, P to go into the shop menu. And we're gonna have a dedicated video on the shop. But I do wanna say here, for better or worse, this has changed a lot. And I'm not sure if it's better or not, but I feel that it's definitely a little worse. Maybe it'll grow on me, maybe it'll grow on you. Maybe you can help me understand why it looks like this. But right at this point in time, not the biggest fan, just saying. So we have brands, which is gonna be a nice easy way to find our brands. Sadly, we can't search and we can't just type in a key and have it jump to that brand, we're gonna to have to scroll. This is gonna be a listing of all the brands. We can go to vehicles and they're sorted, interestingly enough. We have drivables, but this isn't everything we can drive. This is only tractors, trucks, cars, and miscellaneous. We have loaders, which include things we can drive, but also include things that connect to those things like front loader arms and front loader tools. So that is kind of a neat organization. We have trailers of various types, soil cultivation. So they're gonna include plows, cultivators, disc harrows, power harrows, subsoilers, mulchers, stone pickers, and spaders. We have seeding, and that's gonna include not only seeders and planters, seed tanks, but also seed pallets and big bags. So that I kind of think is neat and cool. We have yield improvement, sprayers, manure spreaders, fertilized spreaders, slurry tanks, slurry tools, Slurry transport, weeders, rollers, and consumables. We have combine harvesters, forage harvesting, grassland, baling, root crops, vegetables, special crops, grapes and olives, animals, forestry, miscellaneous. Then we have our objects, and we have hand tools. When it comes to packs, they have returned. So if you're not really sure, but you wanna do rice. Well, this is gonna tell you basically what you need to buy in order to do rice. You're gonna need a tractor, you're gonna need a harvester, a trailer, you're gonna need a planter, and then you're gonna need some rice saplings. Return of the used vehicle shop is indeed back. Mods and DLCs is gonna be an option that is gonna show up once you have a mod or mods and DLCs installed. So that's gonna allow you to easily come here and find vehicles or tools or implements that are associated with a mod or a DLC. And then we have others. So from here, we're gonna be able to jump to the animal menu, the wardrobe menu, the construction menu, back to our farmland screen from the previous section and our vehicle screen again from the previous section. Now we've already done a rundown on character customization. Don't think it's published yet, but it's gonna be coming very, very soon. But let's take a look at our animal dealer. And of course we can get to the screen from within the shop, or we can go to the dealer itself, or we can pull up the cow menu by just going over to the cow pasture. We have cows, pigs, sheep, and goats are organized together horses, and chickens. And of course, with Farming Simulator 25, we now have different age groups. So we can buy them in age from zero months, six months, and 18 for our cows, zero and three months for our pigs, zero, three, and eight months for our sheep and our goats. Oh, our goats have changed, zero, three, and 16 months, sorry, for our goat. Horses are all purchased at zero months. They have a gestation period of 11 months and they reach puberty at 22 months. 
feel that's a little bit shorter than it was for Farm Sim 22. And then chickens, we have zero months and six months, and we have our rooster. Now this screen will show us the animals we own, and this screen will show us the animals we can buy. I'm not really sure I'm keen on this interface. It'd be nice to have maybe a little bit different icon over here that somehow represented the things we owned and things were available at the shop. Shift P is of course gonna take us to the build mode. And the build mode also has some pretty dynamic changes to it. So we have sheds of various types. A lot of these sheds, well, you know and love from Farming Simulator 22. We do have some of these sheds making their way here. You can rotate the camera. You can rotate the shed. Or we can left click and place it down if we want. Lots of different options going on here. Lots of different interesting choices. And you know what? A lot of these buildings are buildings that I have seen already placed on this map. Does that look familiar, for example? So that'll be really interesting to see if, uh, well, how many of these are usable. I got to feel that most of them are usable. And that's definitely a good thing as compared to FS22. We have silos, different types of silos. Return of Rebel and Pallet Storage. We have silos extensions. Now we have new to FS25 constructibles, and they include houses and some barns. And I want to come over here real fast because we happen to have one already put down. So this is a constructible. It's not built yet, but once we build it, then it's going to appear here. So this is what it looks like when you place a constructible. We're going to have a dedicated video on constructibles later on. Let's get away from the bees before someone has a panic attack, right? We have our containers for storage of fuel, seed, fertilizer, etc. And then we have our tools, placeable tools, and our placeable farmhouses. Quite the interesting variety of farmhouse options. From our classic trailer to a really grand, grand house. And we move over to factories. So we have multiple BGAs and multiple productions that we can place down. We're going to have a dedicated video on productions also at a later date. New to Farming Simulator 25 are these little miniature productions. So this is a bakery. So instead of shelling out the big bucks for a full-size bakery, we can shell out 36000 for this small micro bakery. Now, of course, our productions are going to be smaller, but when you're just starting out, well, this is pretty much just what you're looking forward to. So you can see those are all around the same general price range. We have selling points, and we also have some micro selling points. So this is going to be a stone crusher, $7,500. You don't have to invest the money or the space for a larger stone crusher. You can put in this little stone crusher somewhere and then just process your stones slowly using this machine. That was a fall, small kiosk. One of these is actually stationed over here at the road. And it's going to sell various products that you can produce on your farm. We have greenhouses of various varieties. Tarp-based greenhouses, small and large. We're going to have mushroom greenhouses. We have glass greenhouses. And then, of course, we have rice sapling greenhouses. 
we have our cultivation menu so we can place our grapes. We can place our olives. And then new to Farming Simulator 25, we have the ability to place rice fields by simply clicking out the four corners and then completing the field. More on that in another video. We have generators to so give us some passive income as well. We have our animal areas. So we have different pastures for our cows. Horses, pigs, sheep, chickens, bees. And that's right, Fido's confirmed. We do indeed, once again, have dogs in Farming Simulator 25. Now, one thing you may have noticed, and I was looking for this initially, what about, what about placeable pastures? Dynamic pastures. We learned about this in the most recent episode or issue of the Farming Simulator magazine. Well, they're not placed here. You place them by putting a fence around a field or an area of grass. More on that in a later video. Fences. Just talking about you. We have quite the assortment of fences. Ones you might find along the field, one you might find along your yard. A lot of these fences came forward with the premium expansion. We have lights for decorating up your farmyard. And others. Now, some of these buildings are useful, like these tool sheds. Remember, in Farm Sim 25, we now have the ability to place our hand tools in tool sheds for storage. But also, other things are purely decorative. And if they are purely decorative, well, it's going to say so here in the shop. And lastly, we have our sculpting. We can raise terrain, we can flatten it, we can smooth it, and we can make a slope, just like we could in 22. Another video following later related to this. We have lots of ground textures that have been added to FS25. We have various trees that we can place. And then, of course, various plants, shrubbery, and foliage. So, guys, that is going to conclude it for the day, or for this particular video. It's basically everything that I wanted to cover. We've already talked about how we now can start a career save game with lots of different options. And this video did a quick rundown through of the escape menu, the shop menu, and the build mode, because all of those things are significantly different than they were in FS22. So if you're coming over from 22, you're now going to know what to expect and where to find things. If you're new to 25, well, then you know where things are and what most of those options are going to mean. We're going to be covering the garage in much more detail in a follow-up video very, very soon. So keep an eye out for that. We're also going to be having a live stream later today at 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you are available, come check it out. We're going to be playing the game, quite honestly, for the very first time. And I'd love to join that experience with you guys so we can answer and ask questions of each other. And just generally get a very fun time learning Farm Sim 25.